Amendment 2 of the wiring regulations has prompted a few changes to the electrical certificates and in this short video from Learn Electrics we will look at the new minor works certificate and how we should complete it. The full title of this certificate is the Minor Electrical Installation Works Certificate, more commonly called the Minor Works Certificate or abbreviated to just MWC. There are some small changes on this new certificate and they relate to AFDDs and SPDs. First of all, what is a minor works certificate used for? They are for additions and alterations to a circuit that already exists, such as adding new sockets to an existing socket circuit, or adding more lighting points to an existing lighting circuit, or relocating light switches, replacing a damaged socket, and so on, but not for a new circuit or a consumer unit change. There are five paths to the certificate, and my recommendation is to complete each of these in turn. Life is so much easier if you look at it as five little parts to complete rather than one whole sheet of information. We will have a quick overview and then look at each part in more detail. Part one, you should already know. Who is the customer? Where is it? And what are you doing there? Part two, wants to know how the installation is earthed and bonded. In part three, we complete all the circuit details and information, the cables, the protective devices, etc. All the things that we can find from looking. Part 3 contains the new questions about AFDDs and SPDs, but nothing difficult, as you will see. In Part 4, we complete the test results for this work only, just for the circuit that we have worked on. And then, in Part 5, we will make a declaration that the work is OK and that the installation is safe and fit for purpose. Now we can look at each of the five parts in a little more detail. In this video, we will tell you what information or tests are needed, but not how to carry out the tests. That is all part of a previous set of videos. We will assume that the job today is at a newly built care home, completed just a few months ago. The designer and customer were forward thinking in regards to safety of the occupants and have had both AFDDs and SPDs installed from the outset. We've gone there to extend the socket ring circuit and to install two new sockets in the TV lounge. So to begin, here is part one. The customer's name and address and today's date. What was the work that you did today? Be specific, it matters. If something goes wrong later, this might be your get out of jail card. Here, we have stated that two sockets were added in the TV lounge. They can't blame us in 11 months for the broken socket in the kitchen. Which regulations amendment did you work to? If it was Amendment 2, 2022, then enter this. It states which regulations you are following as shown in the yellow box. Then, are there any problems noticed on other circuits? And are there any permitted exceptions? For example, the omission of RCD protection for certain sockets in certain non-domestic scenarios. These will always be accompanied with written risk assessments but most times we should be writing none in here. All our work must be 100% complete and 100% satisfactory before we complete the paperwork. And lastly, any comments on the rest of the installation, things that you may have spotted, a broken light switch, loose trunking, etc. If there are none to be recorded, I always write none noticed. This is a statement that during my time on site, I did not notice any, but I wasn't particularly looking for other problems. Instead of 2022, some electricians will write in AMD2 for Amendment 2, as per the orange box. Either method is acceptable, they both tell us which amendment is being used. On to part two, earthing and bonding. This now affects the whole installation. What earthing system is it? Tick. What is the ZE, the earth fault loop impedance, at this distribution board, called ZDB here for reasons explained in an earlier video? Is the main earth conductor connected? Is there main bonding? And to what? Part 3 
is the circuit details. Everything here can be completed by simple observation. The distribution board number and location, the circuit number, description and reference method. What are the conductor sizes? BSEN numbers of devices, types, ratings, tripping times, etc. And the new AFDD and SPD section which is applicable to us today. Because the protective device is an RCBO and AFDD combined, we need to specify which BSEN numbers are relevant. In this case, for the MCB part and the RCD part, it will be BSEN 61009. And for the AFDD part, it will be BSEN 62606. The SPD is a separate Type 2 device with the number BSEN 61643. Part 4 is the test results. They are only for the circuit that you are working on. You should be able to find R1 plus R2 and the end-to-end -end values of the conductors for the ring circuit, sometimes called LL, NNEE or CPC, CPC, and sometimes called little r1, little rn and little r2. What is the insulation resistance test results? What about the RCD? Did you press the test button? Did you check the AFDDs and the SPD? And then the declaration. Does the work that you have done conform to the regulations? If it doesn't, you haven't finished your work yet. You are signing to say that all is complete. If you need to go back to finish something off, if you have a snagging list, then you should not be signing. When your work is 100%, sign, date, name and address, etc. A quick summary. Look at the certificate as five separate sections. Complete each section in turn. It will make things much easier. AFDD and SPD checks, if applicable, are now included on this certificate. And remember that this is a legal document. It can be used in a court of law if there is a problem in the future. Properly completed, this can be a valuable witness that you carried out your work correctly. You sign to say that the installation is safe and that the work is complete. And that is it. We hope that this short video has been useful and provided a little more knowledge and understanding. Thank you for watching this video, it is very much appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you'll find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel. Don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.